uh, just voices sing, and that was something that um, that was just was just nice. Oh, oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. So this this evening, though, I want to uh, I want to start out in uh, Haggai. I want to start out in Haggai chapter uh, two and verse and verse seven. So and I will give you a little uh, forewarning that that you might hear tonight um, some of what Brother Nathan uh, uh, preached on this morning. So I was sitting there listening, thinking, yep, I'm not changing what I'm doing. <laughs> so you guys will just have to get it twice. And that, that may be something like, uh, you know, we heard it in Sunday school and then we heard uh, a little bit more in depth on judgment uh, in the morning message, so maybe it's just, maybe what we're going to talk about tonight is just something that we want to talk about more. God wants to have talked about more tonight. In Haggai chapter 2, verse 7, And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. Let's pray. Almighty God, we just thank you for, for this time and this word that you've given us and for, for an ability to think and to just to hear what, what you would have us to hear tonight. And Lord, we just pray for the, your word that is, is read and, and, and we just ask you for your help. Just, just help us to, to have this mean whatever... Lord, that you want it to be for us, and we, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So in Haggai, chapter 2, verse 7, And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. And I, I titled this message tonight, The Name of the Lord. And that's kind of what Brother Nathan uh, went over a lot of uh, uh, different names that God is, has given himself, and he has every right to give himself a, a, a name. And uh, besides what, what, uh, what is uh, out of reverence and respect uh, as L, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, besides that, he has, he has many names, but, but Lord, all capitals, was, was done out of reverence for the name of the Lord. And... And what we want to do is we want to go over some different names of the Lord tonight. But one of the things I know that we've been talking about is, is Psalm 119, 105. And we've been talking about Psalm 119, uh, 11. And, and if you remember those, good. If you don't, we can go back and look them up. But we do sing a part of one of those uh, on Wednesday night. But, but one of the things that, that comes by uh, reading the Word of God, one of the things that, at least for me, that, that happens is uh, God says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Brother Vance uh, taught that last, or Pastor Vance uh, taught that last week, you know, where does was faith come? Faith comes from hearing the Word of God. And and you got to read your Bible, and you got to hear uh, the Word of God in order to increase your faith. And I thought about, yeah, I, I, I want my faith increased. And, and while I'm reading my Bible, my faith is increasing. A simple, a simple thing. But it, it's not so simple. I, and one of the things that I, I, I jotted down here, I just wanted to, to go over this, is... Uh, is, is faith, and, and the definition of we find of faith is in Hebrews uh, 11, verse 1, but, but faith is, is the substance of things hoped for, and I just wanted to share a couple of my hopes tonight uh, before we talk about the, the, the name of the Lord, because my hope uh, here tonight is that everyone here will, will continue, will continue to read their Bible. They will continue to fight the good fight of faith. 
and that they will continue uh, to follow, Lord. That, that's, that's part of my hope, and, and that's a substantial part of my hope because that's what having faith is. That's, that just happens to be a substance of, of, of things hoped for in my faith. That's, that's part of that. And, and as Pastor would say, he wants you, he wants I, to follow the Lord all the way to heaven, to follow the Lord all the way to heaven. And another hope of, of my faith is I want to see and I want to handle the one who loved me in my sin. You know, the Bible tells us, but God commended his love toward us and that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. He loved me while I was still in sin. And I'm not saying I'm not in sin right now. It's just I'm forgiven of my sin. But, but like Thomas, like doubting Thomas was, he, you know, he was with Jesus during his ministry for three years. But, but Thomas, Thomas had a, a little problem with faith. He, because Thomas said, you know, except I put my, 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 my fingers in, in, the, in the nail prints of his hand and, and thrust my, my hand in his side, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fully believe till then. My faith is not, is not going to be uh, brought into eternal life at that point. But, but one of the things that I hope for is I hope to be able to handle and, and to be able to see the one who died for me who loved me even while I was a sinner, and that I can look on the glorious Lamb of God one day in heaven when he says, Father, I have paid his sin debt. That is part of the hope that my faith has, that, that I can see where I've been. I know where I've been. I know th some of the things that I've done uh, were not glorifying to God. And and certainly, um, some of the some of the the choices I make were were leading me away from God. Even though I was raised in 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 a Christian home, every person still has free will. I had free will, and I was starting to make wrong choices as an adult. And I just think about God, the Lord, still love me even when I was making these wrong choices. And he still loves me right now. And, and I haven't made some right choices recently. I've, I've, you know, the Bible says, therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. I've sinned recently. I haven't done the right thing. I don't do the right thing all the time. It's, it's hard, but, but I ask God to forgive me. And I ask for help to do the right thing, even though it's hard. Part of my faith is to touch and handle and, and see the glorious Lamb of God that died for me and, and says, Father, I've paid his sin debt in full. That's part of my hope and my faith. At, at, at many points... And this is how I want to uh, go into, into the, the topic tonight, the name of the Lord. At, at many points in my life growing up, I was very careful about not using uh, the name of the Lord in vain. And, and this, this is still important because thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take of his name in vain. The Lord is serious about his name. His name is to be revered, re revered. It is to be honored and respected. And you know what? I did my best with my mouth to do that. But you know what? My actions, my actions didn't reflect that sometimes. My actions took the name of the Lord in vain. It, it said, I said I was a Christian and what my, my hands and my feet and did and where my where myself went and, and did, they didn't, they didn't, it, I took the name of the Lord 
in vain with my actions. And, and one of the things that, that I want to do is I want to say what a great God and Savior he is because even though I was doing this stuff, even though I was this person growing up, he still loved me. He was still there waiting for me, waiting for you, waiting for someone that may hear this tonight to go, maybe, maybe I, I need to consider who the Lord God is. So tonight, I want to go over the name of the Lord. And here in Haggai, chapter 2, verse 7, we find it says, And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The prophecy, the vision was given to Haggai that, that, that the, the temple will be finished. And, but one day, one day, this temple is going to have the desire of all nations come and be present in the temple. And, and that is the name of the Lord is the desire of all nations. That is the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is the desire of all nations. We sing, hark the herald angels sing. And one of the, one of the, the verses from that song says, come, desire of nations, come. Fix in us thy humble home. Rise the woman's conquering sea. Bruise in us the serpent's head, Adam's likeness, now a face, stamp thine image in its place, final Adam from above, reinstate us in thy love. And if you don't think after reading that verse that the desire of nations is Jesus, I would then point you back to Haggai 2.7. What is the desire of all nations if it is not the Lord Jesus, if it is not God himself that will come after shaking all nations, changing everything as we know it, changing the way God was worshipped. You know, the, the veil of the temple was rent in twain when Christ died. We had access to the throne of God through Jesus. He changed the way that, that God literally dealt with, with people and how they, they worshipped him. And the desire of all nations, the Lord Jesus. I want to uh, give you the definition of the word desire. Of course, it's from Webster's 1828 uh, dictionary. It says, desire is an emotion or excitement of the mind directed to the attainment or possession of an object from which pleasure, sensual, intellectual, or spiritual is expected. But I like this part of the definition. I like this part of the definition because English is not what the Bible is written in. It's what we read it in, though. I'm very glad because I am horrible at Spanish. I tried to converse uh, with, with Savannah at uh, the night of Bethlehem uh, on, the ride, on the ride back, and I think, I think I got out one sentence. And after that, I was done, and she was just kind of smiling at me. It's like... <laughs> So I'm glad it's not in Spanish. I'm glad it's in English. But one of the things that, that this definition here of desire says, in other languages, desire is expressed by longing or reaching toward, and when it is an ardent or intense, it approaches to longing. It is a longing. It is a, 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 an intense longing for, as I, as I explained, my Part of my hope is to see and to touch the Lord Jesus, the desire. It is my, it is my longing. It's my longing to do this. It's, it's my desire. I want the desire of all nations. The desire of all nations has come, but I've yet to, to physically uh, touch and to physically see the desire of all nations. I want the Lord Jesus to deliver me. One, another another uh, name, or actually several different names that the Lord says he is, is in Revelation 1. We'll read Revelation 1, um, verse 8. Or we may do a little bit more.
I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Here we have God saying, hey, you can refer to me as Alpha, and you can refer to me as Omega, and you can refer to me as the Almighty. And it is important, the words in the Bible, because we're going to find this in just a little bit, the Almighty. And down in verse 11, we have that he is the beginning and the ending, the, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end and the Almighty. This is what Jesus is. The, 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 the book of Revelation states at the very beginning of it is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Revelation is about the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ here is referred to as the Alpha and the and Omega. He is the beginning and he is the ending and he is the Almighty. This is who uh, the Lord Jesus is. In other words, Jesus is the one and only true and living God, and, in, and this shows that Jesus is very God indeed. Revelation 5.5, 5, which is awfully close to what Brother Nathan started to this morning. He started at, at, at verse 6, but I'm going to pick Revelation 5.5 5 here. We're going over the, the name of the Lord and we're just going over some of the, the different ways that the Lord has been addressed or the Lord has addressed himself as. So Revelation 5.5 5 says, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I could do, Brother Nason's, Who is worthy to open the book? But... I don't think I'd have quite the, quite the, the way that, that, that Brother Nathan can do it. But, but one of the things here is, is we find the one who is worthy to open the book is referred to as the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is, he is the, the king. He is the, the ruler of the tribe of Judah. Also, this is... Uh, working into the prophecy as well because he is the root of David. He is the root of David. And, and that is something that, that Jesus, who we're talking about, the name of the Lord, that Jesus had a discussion or a debate. I wouldn't say it was a really uh, uh, easy debate or a very good debate because how can you, how can you come to the Lord, you know, well, who is David? Uh, who is, uh, how, how then callest David thou and son, you know? It's like, uh, you know, I, don't, I, don't know. I think we got to go over to the, this, uh, the next synagogue over here. And, you know, it's something that, that Jesus used himself to try and teach. Hey, who is the son of David that, that even David is going, you know, he is Lord. And this is something that we find here revealed to us that he, that Jesus, the Lamb of God we have here in heaven is, is known as the Root of David. He is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals of. And this is, this is the Root of David. And I, I will say that this is both a physical and a spiritual root. And you can, can use, use some reasoning power and figure out why he's physical and and a spiritual root. This is talking about Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth, the Messiah. Also, this is very interesting because Brother Nathan said this morning, this, this book contains the judgments of God, contains what God is going to do. And I, I agree with that. And, but I would like to add that, that, that I, I picture this book as being God's plan 
This is, this is what God and God alone is going to do. And who besides God knows what God is going to do? It's, it's not a trick question. The answer is, is only God knows what God can do. Uh, again, furthering that, that, the, that the Lamb of God here, the, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, is very God. He is the only, the only person that can open the book and loose the seals thereof and know what the plan that God has laid out for the rest of this time on earth is going to be. Jesus, I, this is my two cents, and you can take this two cents and you could just throw it to the side or whatever, but, but I think at this point, Jesus is uh, the Son of God, the, the, the second person of God has now responsible for, for all the workings of what is going to happen at this point when he opens the book and he looses the, the seals thereof, that Jesus is now ultimately responsible for the workings thereof, just like, just like he was there in the beginning, because there was nothing that was made without him. Just like here, I think the Father is giving all things into, into Jesus to take care of. That's just my two cents. There's, there's some of you that I know may differ with that uh, opinion, and that's, that's okay. That's... That's good because you could you could go both both sides of that because there is some some things only only God the Father knows I know that but but here we have we have Jesus taking the book and now he's responsible for for loosing uh, the seals on it and showing what God has revealed in there so Jesus is known as the 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 line of the tribe of Judah. And also the, the root of David. And we're going to pick up another verse here uh, out of Isaiah. And we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 44. And we're just going over the, the, the name of the Lord and just, just how many different facets he is, he's been revealed to us in. And we're going to find a different facet all the way back in Isaiah 44. We're going to go to verse 6. Isaiah 44, verse 6 says, Thus saith the, the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. That sound familiar? It does to me because we just read it in Revelation. We, where... Where God said, I am Alpha and Omega. I am the beginning and the end. I am the Almighty. And here, here he inspired Isaiah to, to write, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. And here we find Jesus as being God's Redeemer. Here we find the Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, and and. Also, that there is, that there is nobody besides the Lord that can redeem us. There is nobody besides the Lord God who is able to to forgive us, to redeem us, to be able to pay the price for us. That, as was taught this morning, that that the price is too high. There's no one that cannot pay it. There's nobody that has not done a certain thing uh, that can be, that can judge over us. That cannot. Not go, you know what, That's, he can't judge because he did this. Well, this Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, this is Jesus. And this is exactly what Job said, you know, in Job 19.25, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. So if, if Job is saying, I know my Redeemer liveth, and shall stand on the earth at the latter day, well, this is None other than the Lord Jesus. That is being talked about here by Job, and this is none other than the Lord Jesus being talked about as the Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. So Jesus Christ is the Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, another name 
that we can say. And, you know, I'll just say, I like the song, I Will Glory in My Redeemer. I, I like it so much, and that's one of the songs I like to hear a cappello. I will glory in my Redeemer. And I just think about, about glorying. And that's part of my faith, my hope, to be able to, to, to touch and be able to see my Redeemer, be able to see Jesus, Jesus the Lord. And another name, many names, who we're going to find in Isaiah 9, 6. And, and this is, I keep pointing this way, and I'm going to stop doing that. I don't know why, I'm just going to stop doing that. Isaiah 9, 6. We're just going to read just that one verse. Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And I wanted to, to you know, recall your mind now. I said, remember the thes. And here's the reason why I said that. We're gonna, I wanna, want you to remember the thes here. Handel's Messiah uh, has this portion of scripture kind of uh, encompassed in Handel's Messiah. And, and the, the, the Handel's Messiah was actually written in 1741 uh, by George, uh, F George Handel. I'll leave out his middle name. <laughs> I think it's F Friedrich. So George Friedrich Handel, but, always, but people refer to George, uh, people refer to Handel's Messiah as who wrote it? Uh, well, Handel did. You know, nobody says George Friedrich Handel. So, so it was an English language or, oratorio, just a, just a big, a big symphony uh, with, with voice uh, that was composed in 1741. And well, what did they use? They used the Bible. And what did they use? Well, they used the only thing that they had around, which was the King James Bible. Okay, this is interesting because you don't get you don't get a wonderful Jesus is not wonderful when you go to some of these other versions. You go to the ESV version; it doesn't have a comma in there. It says "wonderful counselor." Well, I agree, Jesus is a wonderful counselor, but he's a wonderful comma, and he's a counselor comma. You put those two together, that's part of Jesus' name. That's part of Jesus' title is wonderful. Jesus is also counselor. He's also the, the, which is not in other uh, modern versions. He's, he's the mighty God. He's the everlasting father. And he's the prince of peace. That is not what is in other translations. They just say, Wonderful Counselor, Everlasting Father, Almighty God, the Prince of Peace. He's not the anything. I would say Jesus is the, the Almighty God. He is the Mighty God. I'm sorry, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. He is also the Prince of Peace. There is no others. That is what you miss when you don't read your Bible from the King James Version. And you know... Forget about, <laughs> wow, that was, forget about even trying to follow Handel's Messiah from, let's say, an eclectic translation, let's say the message, right? You go into Isaiah 9, and you'll be like, uh, where's verse 6 at? Oh, you won't even recognize Handel's Messiah if you're using that scripture that was used in there, which is the only thing they had. So, so, so you use the King James Version of the Bible because that's the pure word of God. That's the word of God that was preserved and settled in, in heaven forever. And you know what? I'm going to tack on. This has nothing to do with the name of God, although this, the name of the Lord, this does have everything to do with the Lord because it is word. There's no copyright needed on God's word. All these other, all these other versions... They've got the little circle with the C in their copyright that says to me, stay away from it. Luke 2, 25. 
is where we're going to find we're going to find another name of the Lord. And I'd like to say that this is a special one right here, but they're all special. But the circumstances surrounding this maybe is a little special. Luke 2, verse 25, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And I think you've already picked out what the name of Jesus is right here. Is Jesus is known as the consolation of Israel. Consolation means to comfort, to have an alleviation of misery or distress of mind, a refreshment or the mind of or spirit. In other words, to strengthen the mind as hope, joy, and courage and the like. He's the consolation. He's there as the consolation of Israel. But fortunately, he can be our consolation now as well because God had the plan laid out, the plan that may or may not be in the book of Revelation chapter 5, which, which was sealed with seven seals. God's plan was to have the, to have the gospel preached unto Israel first. And then, then, they were, then they were given leave to go to the Gentiles. So that's why Jesus is our consolation now. But, but Simeon was a, was a just and devout man. He was very special because God told him that he was not going to see death. He was not going to, to pass from this world into, into glory without first seeing the consolation of Israel. He saw Jesus. That's part of my faith, part of the hope of my faith is to see Jesus. Simeon got to see Jesus before he passed away. Very, very special uh, name, the Consolation of Israel. And I told you earlier, and I've been referencing it throughout this time, that, that one of the hopes is going to be just, uh, just to be able to see, be able to, to touch, to feel, to, to hold, to hold my Savior, Jesus. And that's just what, what I was going to read. I'm not going to read it. But in John 20, that's what Thomas did. Thomas, he had all these doubts until, until well, there was Jesus. And, and, and he didn't need to, to touch or, or do anything like that. Because what, what did Thomas do? Thomas said, my Lord and my God. That is who Jesus Christ is. That is who the name of the Lord is, is Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is God. He is the Messiah. He is the desire of nations. Jesus is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the ending. He is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the Root of David. He is our Redeemer. Jesus is the Wonderful, the Wonderful, and he is the counselor. He is the mighty God. He is the everlasting father. He is the prince of peace. He is the consolation of Israel. And Jesus is Lord, and Jesus is God. The name of the Lord. Let's pray. Almighty God, we just thank you for for being able to, to go into your word and just see how we can, we can reverence your name and we can just understand the, the various aspects of you and, and how you minister to us. And we just thank you for, for being able to freely, freely in this country just to study your word and, and go to church without, without fear and, and distress or, or or persecution and Lord we just pray that you can strengthen right now these the Christians our brothers and sisters that are in persecution and distress Lord that are in peril that are that are in danger in other countries and and we just pray Lord for for just 
you to comfort them and, and just put your hand of protection on them and, and, and move them through the crowd just like you did so many times, Jesus. And, and Lord, we just praise you and we just give glory to your name. Amen. The name of the Lord. Many, many ways that we can reference and we can be reverent and we can just ponder the name of the Lord. So we just have a, a, 